A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore console one another with this message. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. It was about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid him in a rock-hewn tomb in which no one had yet been buried. At daybreak, on the first day of the week, they took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were puzzling over this, behold, two men in dazzling garments appeared to them. They were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. They said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has been raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
God did not make death. It came about precisely because we, the human family he created, turned away from him. And God did not leave us under the curse of death. Though yet we must die, he has transformed it in Christ by becoming one of us, going through death with us, rising and taking our human nature to the heights of heaven and then pouring out upon us the gift of baptism and faith, the gift of His Spirit, so that the eternal life that will survive death, that will totally conquer death, is shared by us even now. We read in this beautiful passage of the resurrection that Christ has been raised. We are the body of Christ. We have been raised. In our baptism, we have already died and been raised with Christ. We share that new life, and it will flower completely as we die in Him and rise on the last day. As Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, not just spiritually will we rise, but physically and be united physically with the Lord and with one another. All this fulfills the prophecy we heard in the first reading where God said through Isaiah, I will destroy death forever. Now, brothers and sisters, destroying death is a promise fulfilled not only in the hope of the resurrection on the last day. It's fulfilled by the fact that right now, as we have this Mass, as we observe another All Souls Day, Death has not stopped life or love for our departed friends and relatives. What do I mean? Well, number one, they are alive. The soul survives the death of the body. And so they are aware, they can think, they know God, they remember, they can pray. And secondly, the reality of death does not stop our ability to love them and help them. We pray for those who have died because we are not quite ready to say, I don't think any of us, that we are perfect at the end of our life. We are perfect when we make that transition. We are all trying to become better each day, trying to grow in virtue, And yet heaven, nothing impure shall enter there, the Word of God tells us. And and Scripture always talks, or Jesus talks about it, St. Paul talks about this process by which we are transformed. Glory to glory, we are transformed. We are purified in the inner person to become more and more like Christ. Has that process reached its fulfilled point of perfection on the day that we die? If not, does God not give us the opportunity for that to continue? That's what purgatory is. In any case, our prayers help our brothers and sisters. They help them. So the fact that somebody has died doesn't mean we stop loving them, doesn't mean we stop helping them. And that's why we have this commemoration today. Let's remember especially not only those that we have known in this life, but also those who are unknown, those who are forgotten by everybody, those who have nobody to pray for them. We pray for them all today. And we renew the conviction that we have that the last word of the human story is not death. It is life and resurrection. Let us not only nourish that faith and hope ourselves today, that the promise of God that he would destroy death has been fulfilled. But let's proclaim that gospel to the world, that all may embrace the one who is the resurrection and whose name is Jesus Christ. Amen.